Good morning, you guys. Welcome to our Limitless Leaders virtual strategy session. We're sitting here with our very own EXP's Cynthia Peterson. She is a top producer on Team Fast, and she's an amazing person, amazing wife, amazing friend. I've definitely gotten to know her very closely over the last four years, and we're both on the team together. So um, I'm so honored to have her come out and do this training session for us. Cynthia is one of those people where she's the opposite of me. Our brains work in two totally different ways, and I appreciate that about her so much because she's the details person. She's the compliance person. She's the paperwork person and making sure everything is dotted and crossed and perfect and organized and highlighted, and she makes notes and I am like not that person. If you know anything about me, I am like, let's just go freaking shoot shit at the wall and figure it out. And I usually stumble all over myself trying to figure it out. So having people like Cynthia in my corner has been so, so helpful for me. And I've run ideas past her all the time. And she's like, well, Mel, have you tried doing it this way? Or what about just tweaking it a little bit and trying it that way? So without further ado, Cynthia, good morning. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm so glad that I get to give back to you because you've given a lot to me when it comes to like all the marketing stuff. That's why it's so important that we go out and we find people that really play into our weaknesses so that they can become strengths. So I'm so appreciative to be here. And today we're getting into time blocking and getting you some of your time back so that you can calmly go clean the house when you feel like you've got the energy <laughs> to do so. <laughs> so let's dive into it. First and foremost, uh, what we're the calendar time blocking skills that we're going to be using today are geared toward Google Calendar. I know that a lot of us are still on a paper calendar or, or use the Apple calendar on our phones. For me, what I have found best because I used to have a paper calendar and my Google calendar, and I would miss things all the time. So I said, forget this. I need a calendar that goes with me everywhere. And what goes with us everywhere? Hello, our little phones, right? So uh, we're going to be using Google calendar today. Um, I also think that it's really important that we point out the elephant in the room, which to me is... It's a hard time in our industry right now. Um, Brian Buffini at his bold predictions just mentioned, you know, 20% of agents won't make it through this year. My goal is to make it so that we're all in this room. We're all still here next year. And how we're going to do that is by learning what we need to do to strengthen our clients and to strengthen our business. Um, so, 20%, you know, that's a huge number. Let's fill our jar so that we can fill our clients jars too. Um, and when I say fill your jar, I mean in the mornings. So Brandy was giving us a great example about how on Monday mornings, she does three workouts because she knows that that's what gives her energy for the rest of the week. I love that because that is a very similar mindset to what I have. And you want to, of course, fill your cup first, put your breathing mask on first, as they say, right? And so when I share with you guys what my calendar looks like, you'll see that a big, big portion of my time is actually time that I have blocked off for my self-care. If we imagine that analogy, I know we've all heard this back in the day. If we imagine an analogy of a jar. And if I have sand, small pebbles, and big rocks that I need to fill this jar with, of course, I'm not going to put the sand in there first, right? What I'm going to do with this jar is first, I'm going to put in the big rocks. It's like Tetris, right? I'm going to fill in my jar with big rocks. Then give it a little shake and put in my pebbles, another little shake, then I fill the sand. The big rocks in this analogy is your self-care. Yes, of course, for yourself, 
It's what you do for your family, you know, attending the kids' soccer games, those big things that matter that you would not dare miss, right? That's the big rocks. Your pebbles, these are your income generating things, your, your business stuff. And then the sand, that is going to be things like education, um, you know, filling your calendar with networking, things like this. So when I talk about the jar, keep that in mind. Um, so let me just share with you um, how I got my calendar set up. First came burnout. I burnt out twice in this industry and I never, ever, ever want to go back there. And I don't want for you guys to ever get there also. And so what I had to do for myself to realize, hey, I'm not going back to this burnout that I've been in, um, I had to really audit myself and consider what, what am I doing where I'm not filling my own cup? What am I doing that's taking me eight hours that I can do in, in two hours? What am I doing that is to perfection that instead I can just do to completion? Guys, it used to take me eight hours to send out my monthly marketing tips. No, not anymore. It now, I mean, my monthly newsletters, now I can complete four monthly newsletters in about four hours instead of one. It used to take me eight hours. And what I was doing is I would like sit down at my desk and start my newsletter. And then I would remember, oh shit, I was supposed to pull disclosures. And then I would get distracted and go make lunch. And then I would get distracted and, oh, I got to go do the laundry. Or, oh, my favorite agent just came into the office. I'm in a chitty chat for an hour. That doesn't work well for me. So now when I know I have really dedicated focus time, I lock myself in an office. Like those two hours, or excuse me, those four hours where I'm working on my marketing and my newsletters, the door is shut. My phone is down. Um, I tell my clients all the time, look, <laughs> unless the house is on fire, unless there is a flood, there's no such thing as a real estate emergency. I will get back to you the moment I am able to, but there will be times where I won't be able to connect with you right away. And I do. I put my phone face down. I do not give myself time to go on Instagram during my focus time. That is my time that I've dedicated to this stuff. And I do want to say too, I, I want to make sure to be sensitive here. I know that I have, I, I don't have kids, right? And so I know that with littles, like their priorities, that's, that takes foremost thought. Like if my little is not feeling well, I got to be with my little time is going to get moved around, but don't worry, you guys. I have a system in place to where even if you have an afternoon where you got to just snuggle the babies because they're not well, don't worry. I have a way that we can flex out some time to where you'll still get that task done. You'll just switch some things around on your calendar. I love this chat, by the way. Um, oh my God, why did she just describe me? Yeah, right. I mean, we've all been here, you guys. We've all been here. And burnout, it definitely creeps up on you. Um, so let me share really quick uh, my screen here. So with time blocking, what I did is, like I said, I had to audit myself. So what I did is I took a three week chunk. Sorry, Cynthia, hold on one second. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I do want to say I just pulled out my Google calendar to kind of follow along with her and to be able to implement some of the things that she's talking about. Great. So if you have the ability to do so, pull out your Google calendar, open up a tab, get a notebook, a pen, and a paper out because Cynthia is a master at this stuff and she's probably going to go through this really quickly and you're going to miss some stuff. So open up you know, some note, a Google calendar, something so that you can actually implement some of this stuff in real time as she's explaining it. Go ahead, Sin. Sorry. Love that. That's okay. Thank you for saying that. Um, so yes, doing a three week audit. And what I mean by that gals is look, we just started this month, basically, right? We just started Monday, the fifth, the first Monday of the month. 
I challenge you all to start your three week audit today. What a time audit looks like is every time that you sit down to do something. So like for today's meeting, you're going to pop that into your calendar. Um, let me take, let me switch to next week just to give you an example. Okay. So, oh gosh, next week is even worse. Uh, let me move to like September. <laughs> Y'all, August is crazy, okay? Uh, so let me just move into September. Let's say that on Tuesday, I had a client call that took me an hour that I wasn't anticipating. I'm going to put that in the calendar. Client call, and it lasted an hour. Uh, then right after I had to go take my dogs to get a grooming, guess what? Even that's going to go into the calendar. So you're going to audit yourself and every little thing that you do throughout your day, you're going to put it into your calendar for the next three weeks. Then on week four, you're going to start setting up your big rocks. So this is next month. And these are my big rocks already in here. So for me, my morning routine is my biggest rock of all. If I don't have this morning prep, I cannot be my best self. So that's the first thing that goes in. I also know that I need every couple of days scheduled lead follow-up time, right? But this is after I've done my three-week audit now I know where I can build in time and what that time looks like. You know, if you have, if you know that in those three weeks, you typically spend about 15 hours per week on lead follow-up, that's fabulous. What you're going to do is you're going to add three, five hour blocks into your calendar to reflect that 15 hour amount of time that you need to do lead follow-up. Or if you want to take it in bite, more bite-sized pieces for five days, you're going to do three hours of lead follow-up. Does that add up five times three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to add in 15 hours of lead follow-up time within your calendar. And watch this. Even when I go into the following week, Wow, my life is crazy right now. Okay, let's go back a week. Even when I go back a week, everything is still in place here, right? Those big chunks of lead follow-up time, no matter what is happening, those are still there. So that's the time audit that I suggest that you do. Hey, guess what? You just had Monday. Go back and think about everything that you did yesterday and put that in your calendar. I'm telling you guys, you will see trends in yourself that you really want to strengthen like oh my gosh I love the fact that I have this three-hour morning routine I know it takes me three hours to get ready with workout and everything and you're also going to see you are wasting time on other things right so that's the time audit um let's talk about the focused calor calendar review I just uh, wanted to stop really quick and see if anyone has any questions so far about that time audit. Oh, look at Brandy's little man. So oh. cute. Hi. Oh, Say hi. Hi. It's their birthday today. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, little man. So cute. Yeah, so does anyone have any questions about that? I just implemented that morning prep in my calendar. Like I just put it in there, a reoccurring event, Monday through Friday. So, and it changes sometimes. I don't have a question. I, sorry, I'm losing my voice. I don't have a question, but that, the audit is, that is. <laughs> I'm so glad you think so. And I'm telling you, wait till week four. Well, like, for that, but yeah, no, that's why I have you ladies. Cause yeah, I don't think of everything. <laughs> Well, and we've been like, I've been in your shoes before where I'm like, I have no time to do anything. How are people doing this? This is how they have, well, either they know how to fly by the seat of their pants really well, and they are letting some people down without time walking, or they just, I don't even know. I don't know how people do it without their calendar, you guys. 
I don't, I don't know. All right, cool. Let's keep it rolling. All righty. So I have to move into September, y'all, because August is crazy. I've got a listing coming on. I'm trying to take time off. It's nuts. So this is what a typical, even that, it's got the newsletters. Okay, so that's okay. This is what, a, can you see my screen? What am I sharing? Just the calendar, right? Okay. Um, this is what a typical week looks like for me. And I know that Monday, Wednesday, Friday are typically heavy admin days for me. So those are days that I'm typically sitting at a desk for long extended periods of time, but we know stuff comes up out of nowhere, right? We might get a Zillow caller. Hey, we want to see one, two, three main street today at five. You bet. I'll see you there. So let's take Monday the 23rd just as a micro um, viewpoint of this, okay? So as an example, I go to Monday, I have this flex block here and here. You guys see those flex blocks, okay? So if I have a buyer that, surprise, I want to go out at five o'clock, these flex blocks are made for oh shit moments, you know, the baby is not well. I got to take my dog to the doctor, whatever that looks like, right? Um, I had a listing appointment come up out of nowhere. Fabulous. Love these things. So let's say that we have a buyer that wants to go out at 4.30. Okay, cool. We'll pop you down at 4.30. I know that that appointment is going to take me probably about a half hour. Property tour. I like to do all my appointments in red so I don't miss them. So there's my property tour. I also know I need to give myself, even if it's five minutes down the road, I'm going to give myself 30 minutes of drive time to get there and set up the property for my clients. And I know it's probably going to take me, you know, a little bit of time to close up and get back home. So I just time blocked for my property tour. Now I'm going to take this flex time. I'm going to move it down the road to Friday. Okay. So what that did is I hold space for oh shit moments. That's all that is. Um, if we don't have these time blocks, yes, paying yourself back. Absolutely. Um, when I don't have these time blocks, I just feel like a clusterfuck, to be quite frank with you. Um, so let's say by the end of the week, so I am going to come back to this week. So by the end of the week, if I don't have this flex time used up and I've moved both my flex blocks to Friday, guess what that gives me? You're off. You get to go enjoy yourself. I get to go enjoy myself without being guilty of, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And I mean, yeah, there are some times that I will, you know, take a flex block, delete it, and I'll put in a, a, a block for marketing right? Or something that I've been really passionate about, like my agent efficiency trainings. I'll block in time just for that. But by me taking those flexible blocks, it gives me the space to not have oh shit moments and be like, that's okay. I'll move this stuff around. Um, so we're going to move this back now. <laughs> um, so, so Sam, just one question. So yeah. You just move the flex time into the new task that you're doing and you recolor it and you rename it, right? So then once you use up that flex time, you don't create another new one because that one's now used up. Right, exactly. Okay, just wanted to be clear about that. For sure. Um, You'll see I do have time off that I blocked, but looking at last week, the reason that I'm giving myself so much time off is because this was last week. I did not give myself even a shift off. I didn't have a half day off. So this coming week to prevent burnout for myself, 
I gave myself extra time off. I know that if I go two weeks hard grind without one full day off, I'm not useful that next week. Like I burn out that quick. It takes me two weeks and I'm out. But that's because I've time audited myself. I know that I it's I'm toasted after two weeks. Um, so even like today, I have some things I need to restructure. Um, what I want to make sure in the last five minutes, what I want to make sure to give us space for is knowing that you are in control of your calendar. Even when shit hits the fan, by creating these spaces for yourself, you have time back allotted to you. My open house, I think it's going to be next weekend. I have those already blocked off. If my open house doesn't sell, I have block for potential open houses. I'm already thinking that far in advance because I know my calendar so well. I live by this calendar. When I go to bed every night, I look at the calendar the night before to see I need to be at my desk ready to go 8.30 full stop. That's the time I have to start. Some days I give myself a little breathing room and like yesterday I didn't get to my desk until nine, but that gave me a little bit of extra time and I finished around six, 6.30. So just give yourself the space to, to take that time off. And the fact that you have all your production scheduled, when you go to take these times off, you're off. You're not worried about, oh my God, I should be at open house. I should be, I should be, I should be. Quit shooting on yourself, guys. You should be also taking time off. Um, So that's how flex times work. The calendar audit, I think, will be incredibly helpful. Um, if this seemed like it was really quick, it was. Um, this is a very small view into what I'll be doing for agency efficiency training. Yeah, quit shooting on yourself, no doubt. So um, in the next three weeks, I am doing agency efficiency training where I will teach you guys how to get time back. You guys have a big heads up already. You'll already have a full week of time auditing once you come into these agency efficiency trainings. I just dropped the link for them. Um, they'll be all over the Bay Area and we're going to go into time walking. You guys got a deep dive into time walking. I'm only doing surface level for this. Uh, we're also going to be talking about tools that I use to keep my sanity and setting up your space getting your workspace set up for the day so that you can be as productive as possible. Even if you only have 20 minutes to sit down and work really hard, those 20 minutes are going to be the most efficient part of your day because of the way that your space is set up in your headspace. I'm not just talking physical workspace. We're talking headspace too. So um, I dropped the link for the agency efficiency trainings. What questions, if any, do you guys have in the last few moments here? Yeah, feel free to take yourselves off mute. If yeah, not, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to do an Elias and call on somebody because I want vol I want volunteers as tribute. Princess, uh, I saw you uh, go unmute. Yeah. Um. So typically, uh, my biggest thing is like my sleep. I have to make sure I'm rested well. Yes. But we usually go to bed. And oh, then I love that. Bed. Yeah, yeah. I really like Great genuinely question. appreciate that question because I'm the same way. I'm an eight hour a night person. I can survive off seven, but it's not the best performance. Um, I'm usually in bed by like 930 at the latest. I'm up by 530 so that I can start my morning routine. I, I do the morning routine based off the Miracle Morning by Hal Ed Elrod. It's a really great book. It's a quick read. I mean, you could probably finish that book in like two days. It's so good. The Miracle Morning by hey, Hal Elrod. So good. Yep. I love that. Who else has a question? I, I mean, I have one while you guys are thinking up of one. I, you know, want to know a lot of times we have to put out fires. There are emergencies kind of yeah. like we we're touching on in the beginning. 
How do you, in a world where we're constantly chasing the next client, we're chasing the next paycheck, the next contract, how do you create that like non-negotiable time for yourself? Because sometimes we're just in a situation where it's like, we got to pay the bills and we can't say no. I feel you so much. I truly do. My non-negotiable time has to be in the morning because I know past 9 a.m., shit's going to come at me. It, it's going to come at me. But if I wake up before the rest of the world and I fill my cup first thing in the morning, I'm good. I'm set for the rest of the day. I'm, I'm taking you back to last week. Last week was an oh shit week. Um, Sunday, I had my two yellow flex times here. I was going to take a half day off on Sunday, but here's what happened. I had a client call me and say, I want to tour this property. I had another client and that was in Oakland. Then I had another client tell me, I want to, I want you to go look at this property that I just toured at open house in Livermore. So I had to take my booty from Oakland to Livermore. Then I had to drop off CMAs. Then I had to meet with a client to talk to them about the house that I just saw for them. Then I had to meet with the other client for the Livermore property to go over the offer for them. So my half day that I had off, bye-bye, it got zapped out. Um, so that will happen, of course, right? I was supposed to take a half day here, but here's what I did. That following Monday, I gave myself a little bit of extra time to just chill and be with myself. So I gave myself, I gave, I got up 30 minutes later. I gave myself an extra bit of time to get ready for work. So of course we're going to have oh shit moments, even when we have our little flex times that scoot down the line. Cause my flex times are always on Mondays, Thursdays, typically. <laughs> they're so crazy right now. Actually, they're usually on Monday, Fridays. And then I just scooch it along. So right. yeah, I mean, it just is the way it is, right? But for me, as long as long as I got my morning thing going, because even even last week when I had that oh shit day, you better believe I still did my meditation, my workout, my journaling all in the morning before I even picked up my phone to text a client. Um, and my clients know I tell them all the time I work 14 hour days. You can reach me 12 of those hours between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. I am so easily accessible to you. After 7 p.m., that's my recharge time with my family. Unless we're in contract or excuse me, unless we're in negotiations, my phone goes on do not disturb. I hope that you can understand that. 99% mm -hmm. of the time they've said, of course, I can understand that. That 1% of the time where they said, you're not going to be available to be 24 seven. No, I'm not. And if you expect that of me, I'm not the right agent for you. Cause guess what? There's 10 more people behind them waiting to work with me that if I tell this one person, no, that expects me to work 24 hours a day, there's people behind them knowing that I wouldn't ask my doctor, my lawyer, my freaking grocery store clerk. I wouldn't ask them to work 24 seven. Why are they expecting us to work 24 seven? Absolutely not. Right. Like this is, this ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. <laughs> no, you can't. No. Now, of course I have clients that will say to me, Hey, I, I have a, a client that's a surgeon. Hey, my last surgery is at 7 PM. Can we review disclosures at 8 PM? I ask, you know, do you have a lunch break that maybe we can talk at? Well, no, not really. Okay, dude, you're saving lives. I get it. Let's schedule a, a zoom at 8 PM. And the next morning, I'm going to give myself a little bit more time to get ready to, to fill my cup. I'm not going to ever let a client take so much time from me that I'm not going to be able to, to fill my own cup. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you own your time. That's how you treat yes. clients, how to treat you. And you really show them that you are a professional. You respect your own time. You have boundaries in your time and Absolutely. that way they also respect you in return and they also understand that you have boundaries and that you're a real person outside of real estate and they have that respect for you automatically. You know, there's the, always going to be that agent that's like running around, flailing about, you know, nervous energy and, you know, just saying yes to everything all the time, 
bending over backwards for their clients. And guess what? Those clients do not respect that real estate agent. They no. probably will jump around from realtor to realtor, you know, and they will not be the type of person that you want to end up working with. So you have to show up as the type of person that you want to work with first, it sounds like, in order for people to respect you and want to work with you as well. Amen. Yeah. Boundary settings are huge. Yeah. Blessing, did you have something you wanted to continue? I did. Um, I was curious about what your evening like decompress, like um, wind down looks like. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be a glass of wine and it's not anymore because I know that for me, alcohol is a depressant. So yeah. that's something else to keep in mind during your three week time audit is check in with yourself. What, what am I doing during these morning routines, during my evening routines? And what is filling my cup? So for me, what that typically looks like is I really try very, very, very hard by around 6, 630, I'm sitting down with my husband and we're decompressing for the day. We're having dinner. I'm tidying up. Uh, usually every night before bed, I like to do a little bit of tidying so that the next day when I wake up, everything's nice and fresh. If I can't do it, I will at least get my living room together because I have to walk out to my living room to get to the gym and I have to walk out through my living room to get to my car. And as long as my little horse blinders are on and I can just get through that room, like, cool, cool, cool. I'll come back to that other mess later. But that's, yeah, that's kind of my thing. And then for my decompression now, uh, edibles, <laughs> just uh, pop an edible at night, get myself relaxed. And I really try to be off when I'm off. Yeah. And then, you know, if I have a client that needs a CMA pulled, then, you know, that's the nice thing about what we do is our computer can go anywhere. I'll sit on the couch and I'll pull some CMAs, I'll, you know, review disclosures, things like that um, after that 6 p.m. hour. But I try to not be on my phone at all past 8 p.m. Like it's rare that I'm texting people back after eight o'clock because I don't want that blue light interfering with my sleep. Yeah. Tried to tell that to my husband. It doesn't work out. <laughs> uh, who else has a question before we wrap up? Anyone going once, going twice? Questions. It was just, this was amazing. I needed this. Oh. Oh. I'm so glad you felt that way. And I, I can see the heads shaking. I can see the, the notes that you guys were taking. I'm so glad you found it helpful. Hopefully you guys can all make it to that agency efficiency training too. Like if you found this helpful, Oof, look out. Yeah, no, I know it's going to be fire. Unfortunately, I'm going to be on vacation from the 11th through the 20th. Try to make it on the 21st in Oakland. Um, I wish it was virtual. If it was virtual, then I would obviously try to hop on from the beach in Florida. But fortunately, it's in person. So um, you're going to rock it. Cynthia, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for our friendship. And I am really looking forward to doing another one of these, maybe in three months. And we could just, yeah. you know, hit on some other topics because I know that this was a really short strategy session, but, you know, would love to have you back again one day. I would love that. And you guys, you know, if you want to send me a DM on IG about how your auditing is going, I'd, I'd love to stay connected with you gals to find out how that's going. And if you need any more help, just DM me. I'm here for you. Okay. Awesome. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you. I'll see you guys on Team Fast at 1030. Our weekly meeting is happening very soon. I'm going to go get another cup of coffee, try to knock some dishes out. Brandy, I saw that you already did that. Good for you. <laughs> so, um, okay, guys, crush your day. See you later. Bye. Bye.